Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Please do subscribe, guys, both EE Arts and also on Evolutionary to get every video. Or join us over on uh, Patreon and become part of the family over there and also on Ko-Fi. So, yeah, I just wanted to cover some things that we might view as very, very basic. But again, there's always people that are coming in. And then there's always new information and new inspirations that come to share with you guys as we go through this journey together. Right. You know, so we try to bring up things that are not so common and then things that are common. If you're just starting on this journey, there's a lot to go over. Yeah. And again, you know, there's always we are always interaction, uh, having interactions, Cindy and myself with different beings around us all the time. You know, of course, in days past, that might have gotten you know, lobotomized For sure. because, again, the the power structure doesn't want people knowing the nature of reality. They want us thinking that we are isolated. We're it. Well, maybe there's aliens out there. They give us that. Well, yeah, there, there's life all around us all the time. They don't want us knowing about it, though. They really don't want us. That's why they give us all these religious prohibitions from the mainstream religions. And. This is something we grew up with. Oh, did you get your fluoride treatment? Oh, no, it's been a while. Oh, yeah. And, and meanwhile, again, they always will give you something as a reason to do something that has nothing to do with the real reason. You know, and also, too, if, if and I'm not a doctor, but if you go have your teeth cleaned or something, they're really pushing that stuff. And it's it's not really great for your teeth either. No, and we're learning. And again, like I have not used fluoridated toothpaste in, in a, gosh, you know, a decade, more than a decade. Uh, and, you know, I found that my teeth have gotten better, that they're actually better now than they were, you know, 10, 15 years ago with a simple toothpaste that's just made of coconut oil, some essential oils, baking soda. You know, we use peppermint, we use clove. Um, you know, as far the peppermint's kind of for flavor, uh, you can also uh, put tea tree in there in small amounts. Uh, the clove is great for your gums. Baking soda takes care of the scrubbing part. The coconut oil is, is really good for sealing it. And if you have sensitive teeth, it gets in there. You know, and, and another thing too, if you look at those uh, toothpaste that, that are sold, it they're they're full of uh, abrasive detergents i mean they're really it's really not good for you at all mm -mm. no and then you know just basically swishing the oil between the teeth yeah. does does a wonder before before fluoride was added to the water supply it was marketed as rat poisoning it was that's where you know the, so much of the profits in the fluoride business came was selling it as a rat poison this is the toxic mass medication that's used with the majority of the U.S. population with no verifiable benefits and without our consent. Oh, there's a lot done without our consent. Here you see from Harvard Public Health, that, you know, of course, so many of these big institutions are completely on the payroll. We understand that. That's where their funding comes from. And yet, you know, that it's gotten to be so self-evident with uh, so much information that's out there that they've had to acknowledge the fact that you know what we've been sold for years is not really the reality C countries that do not fluoridate their water have also seen big drops in the rate of cavities because they'll say well you know the ca rate of cavities going way way down tell you what what don't eat refined sugar that simple you know and you can do it it's just sugar is like c-r-a-c-k it's a horrible addiction. And when I see people that talk about stocking up and they're saying, I can get all the bare necessities, uh, uh, flour, uh, sugar, and uh, no, sugar is not a bare necessity. Sugar is a poison, a toxin, and including high fructose corn syrup. I mean, I have not added any sort of sugar other than uh, to some recipes, I'll add maple, sh you know, pure maple syrup or honey. That's pretty much the extent of what I use. Um, and that's rare. 
that's rare. I mean, we might have maple syrup once every two months, and we might add honey to something once or twice a month. Otherwise, we don't add any sugars to anything. Your your taste buds will get used to it. They do, and, and I'm going to share a really, really valuable trick for those of you who do find it very difficult to leave the sugar because I know I struggled with it for so long. You go and you get yourself one of those candy bars that say 85% cacao. You nibble on that for a week and then go get one that says 70% and it's going to be like eating a Hershey's bar. It's great. There are workarounds, but it does take a little bit of effort. I'm sorry. I had to share that because it's the struggle is real. And you might say, I don't want to give up my chocolate. I can't give up my chocolate. We got 10 pounds of organic cacao in storage, 10 pounds of organic cacao, which is great for you. And in so many ways has a lot of benefits. See there again, nature has given us so many amazing compounds that are delicious. Our taste buds get distorted. We get addicted to things that are not good for us. And then automatically we start associating uh, the food in in a wrong way. Because again, to me, like I bit into one watermelon this year that I said to Cindy, you know, this watermelon's almost too sweet for me. I mean, it's so, so sweet, it's almost too sweet. And I know many people out there be like, how in the world could a watermelon be too sweet? And and it boggles my mind that can people can, like as a kid, we used to have like strawberries and bananas and milk was you know like a treat and then you know we'd sprinkle sugar on it why you know the last cavity i had was 12 years old and i haven't had any since because you know for the most part i've quit drinking soda eons ago drinking any sort of sugary things sport drinks anything that's got high fructose corn syrup any sort of sugars in it in a worst case scenario stevia you know, or some of the sugar alcohols. And again, that's the worst case scenario. I think we can get used to eating things as nature intended and and truly enjoy them more for what they are. It boggles my mind. There's actually people that prefer artificial flavorings to the real real thing, but you know, that's part of the system. It, It is, the system is ruthless. Did you know in 1955, Crest became the first fluoride toothpaste? Fluoride calcifies the pineal gland, otherwise known as your third eye, which literally has rods and cones, literally, just like your other eyes. Your third eye is an eye. It is something that you can see with. And when your third eye becomes your first eye, they can't get the, they can't basically trick you anymore. And, you know, there was, uh, a, a couple questions by somebody uh, who by their screen name you could tell is seriously affected by by the system because you know we're not we're not living in a reality like the controllers give they're trying to convince you that you're living in a certain reality they're trying to convince you that everything's set in stone it's not timelines are constantly shifting and changing they want you to think all the negative stuff, well, that's just the will of God. God's got to punish those that he knows is going to, you know, go against his law. No, that's not the creator of the universe. You know, what you're talking about there is a being that's truly demonic. And so people are literally worshiping the thing that they fear. They're listening to the advice of, quote unquote, demons, and they're worshiping the demons as if they are God. And that's because they don't have an active pineal gland they can't see sense or understand anything but what they're told and so they listen to the lies of the controllers and because they can't sense for themselves they don't know what to do so they are controlled by fear and thus they have a misunderstanding of everything everything that that is true you know and this information it's not easy to sift through but once you get at least curious then you know you're getting somewhere and there's several different ways to decalcify the pineal gland it does take a little time but it's worth it because then you can see the truth fluoride so toxic considered hazardous waste by the epa hitler fluoridated the water in the concentration camps to sedate the prisoners 
same ingredient in rat poison and Prozac. According to Dr. Bill Osmussen, there's the same equivalence of fluoride in an 8-ounce glass of Florida tap water as there is in a pea-sized amount needed to cause call the Poison Control Center. It's insanity. And you know, we, we do see that there is proof that the pineal gland is something that's intended for giving us a vision. Because again, the rods and the cones themselves, we can go through and, you know, this article, I have all the links for you guys to go in depth if you, if you want to go deeper. And please do go deeper, always go deeper. We could go all the way back to Rene Descartes, 1596 to 1650, this is quite a ways ago, emphasized the pineal gland in his writings, calling it the seat of the soul. Well, you know, in in medical qigong and Taoist philosophy, and qigong in Chinese literally just means energy work, there's three reservoirs, three main reservoirs. There's, there's many reservoirs, but there's three main reservoirs for the life force. And one is the lower dantian, and then we have the middle dantian, and the upper dantian. The upper dantian is where the pineal gland is. The lower and the middle reservoirs when we pass on, they they're no longer with us. Only what gets only it, what is transformed and brought up through the lower energy centers up into the seat of the the soul, like uh, Rene was talking about back in sixteen something. Only that we take with us. So the lower, and I'll bring them up just to give you a reference. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is the information that, you know, if you adhere to and understand it, and if you just simply really do the right thing, all of this information will come to you. All the benefits of life will come to you. You know, it's not needed to go out and try to mm, force anything. If you're doing the right thing, the right thing will happen. So the lower dantian, you can see there below the navel. Typically, it's about two inches below the navel, center point of the body. It's, it's where we store the jing. The jing is the more physical life uh, force that helps us with our vitality. Then you have basically the middle dantian, which lies between the solar plexus and the heart chakras. And that's our emotional reservoir of energy. And, and life force. And then up at the pineal gland, the seat of the soul, that is where the Shen, the spirit, resides. And so when we do shed this physical body, it's only what resides up there in the seat of the soul that we take with us. So part of what we are doing in Qigong is first drawing in the life force into the lower Dantian, then we're drawing it upwards once the lower Dantian is full, and when the lower dantian is full, we will typically have vibrant health. It doesn't mean that everything goes away. It doesn't mean that if you, like me, you know, as a 29-year-old foolish youngster was squatting uh, 500 pounds free weight for his 12th rep and ruptured two discs, you know, it doesn't mean that that's automatically healed. Although the qigong did uh, enable me to avoid uh, any sort of surgery that the orthopedic surgeon said was going to be completely necessary at, at 29 into my 30th year, I never got any surgery. And they said I, w I wouldn't jog, I wouldn't play tennis, I wouldn't weightlift again. Well, you know, I was back to single leg squat, uh, single leg lunges with 225 pounds. I was a little thick headed in those days. And boy, I wish I didn't do those things <laughs> at this point in time. You know, but that's looking back uh, 25, 30 years later and realizing the mistakes of youth. But again, when we learn from the mistakes, they're not really a mistake. And truthfully, if I didn't do those things, which made me bedridden, I wouldn't have gone down this path. So in, in retrospect, it really wasn't a, a mistake. It was something that was uh, occurring because I was not on my proper path at that point in time and this was a nudge from the higher self no you know your goal in this life is, is not to you know weight lift six seven hundred pounds your goal is not going to be anything of of you know the typical 
And this is where that meditation and going within uh, can lead us to get back in line and, and harmony with the original purpose of our life and not to go too far off uh, track. But if you understand what your stars look like when you come into this incarnation, because the soul jumps in at a certain time on purpose. The soul jumps in at a time that's going to give it the best opportunity to achieve what it wants to achieve in this life. And that's where having knowledge of your Vedic astrology chart can really, really help you. Mm -hmm. and, and planets have lessons. And in the dignity of those planets, you understand the lessons you come here to learn. Absolutely. So, you know, when I did rupture my disc, what did I do? I don't, I, I just, I started to learn about qigong so it was it was a blessing in and of itself i had already practiced qigong but i didn't really understand everything and i was kind of doing it because you know it was something um that was part of the esoteric side of the martial arts which i've always been drawn to so i'll give you guys these links as always as you see here, a pineal gland, fluoride deposited as a result of the consumption of the fluoridated water. They're not, they're not concerned with your teeth. No, of course not. Dentists want repeat business. Everybody does. Doctors want repeat business. This is where we have to ask ourselves, hmm, should we become our own advocate? Should we actually start to do our own research? Oh, in this world, we have to do our own research. We cannot take for granted anything that these people tell us. Look into holistic dentistry, get yourself some books and understand what is in your control. And we see, when we see the all-seeing all -seeing eye of Ra or Horus, it's really a reference again to the pineal gland. So many things that are occult and hidden, and they want you to be terrified of the word of cult. They want you to be terrified of it. It's in reference to things that they understand, and they're flaunting it in our face saying, we control you because you don't, you don't have a clue about what we're talking about. You got to join our secret society if you want to learn, and that means in some ways you got to sell your soul right basically here you see look at the pineal gland look at its attachment point does that not look like a pine cone does it not look like what we see right here pine cone staff of osiris two intertwined snakes wrapping around it pine cone in the vatican i mean the symbology is everywhere the pine the pineal gland by the way it does release melatonin and serotonin. These are extremely vital and beneficial um, hormones. And melatonin and serotonin are both, we could equate them with you know, very, very positive benefits to them. Many of you might have taken melatonin to try to get to sleep. Because, you know, again, these are all about regulating the body regulating our cycles you know in this world where and and cindy and i are, are have only really recently shifted to where we are pretty much going to bed when the sun goes down and getting up a little bit before the sun comes up and that's really the way that uh is really best for the body overall as well as sinking ourselves to the planet and sinking ourselves to the rhythm of nature well the dogs are helpful yeah, they sure are. They they are the ones that have nudged us into this. Mm -hmm. And so there is absolutely uh, more than one function to the pineal gland. But you can see, why are all these pine cone references? Looking on the staff, and boy, that's a dark-looking, sinister look, is it not? And when we see the Anunnaki gods holding pine cones, pine cone, pine cone, pine cone, pine cone, pine cone, because it's the key. And here we see... The, the snakes going right around the staff. And we see this as a symbol for the AMA, uh, which they recently changed to just one snake. And also the staff of Hermes, Mercury, messenger of the gods. What's the messenger of the gods? Messenger of the gods? Well, uh, you know, again, Mercury is communication. But how do you communicate? Well, you need your pine cone working if you want to communicate. 
it looks like there's wings on that pine cone. Yeah, because then you're actually like the angels in, in that you are able to get around interdimensionally and utilize your consciousness. These uh, snakes are representing the Ida and the Pingala. These are two nadis. Nadis are energy channels. This right here, this uh, wand or staff is, is the Shashumna. And the Shashumna is where the balanced energies of the Ida and the Pingala awaken the Kundalini, which flows up through the spine. All this is symbology. All this is symbology. And then we still have so many people taking literally everything out of the Bible and Revelation. And they think they have a great discovery because they're looking for the literal translation of, of these things. And it's, it's not really about that. The esoteric side of things is what's communicated to the people in the secret societies. It's all about, again, you see these lights. These are your chakras. They're actually interdimensional gateways. Look at Angkor Wat, Cambodia. Pine cones. Pine cones, pine cones, pine cones everywhere on the staff of Dionysus. Pine cones, pine cones, pine cones everywhere. It's all about your all-seeing eye. And again, it's the spiritual eye. And so when we go into meditation, when we're doing our mantras, just to share my experience, when, when I know the guides are around, I start seeing uh, swirling energies and lights. And, and this is from... This is being picked up by the pineal gland. And this has been the case uh, for most of my life where I will see these energies and these lights. And, and these are, again, beings on a different density that if you're just utilizing your two physical eyes, you will not see. The all-seeing eye is the third eye or the spiritual eye. It's, it's the pineal gland, again. Sometimes referred to as the seat of the soul. It remains dormant uh, for, for people unless you activate it. And especially in these times where it's being attacked on many different levels. Um, one of the best ways to activate it and the safest, I feel, is mantras. Because the mantras are sounds put together in a certain sequence in order to safely open up the chakras. Key word is safely, 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 safely. I really cannot express that enough. This is something that's very serious. It's very real. And if you are struggling emotionally or have been diagnosed with anything, you know, I know they give us labels and I don't agree with the labels, but sometimes it's safest just to sit with your meditative practice. And if you're doing the right thing, the right thing will happen. When these in energies are supposed to come to you, they will. You know, it's not something just for entertainment. It's, it's something that we all have, that we all can do, but it needs to be opened safely. And this means time and dedication, which, again, everything in our world is geared towards instant gratification and satisfaction now. That TikTok mentality, that timestamp mentality. Oh, I don't have time to watch the whole video. Please put timestamps in so I can know exactly where to go. You're never going to get anywhere if you have that mindset. You're never going to get anywhere because it takes it takes not just hours. It takes years and months of just dedicated practice. And this is what is, is known. Again, many yogis have achieved what we might think are superpowers, but that's not the goal. The goal is, is, is what was called enlightenment or re recognizing the oneness of all things and being able to sense also that you are not just the body. Once you know you're not the body, it shifts everything. Everything changes. When, when you can escape the confines of the body through meditation, then everything changes. You're, you're no longer going to be controlled by the fear. And if you do get glimpses of, say, past lives or are able to sense other beings uh, in other dimensions around you, again, it, it just creates this different worldview and a different mindset. 
you can't put the genie back in the bottle once it's been opened up. And yes, it can be a Pandora's box if it's not done properly. Mm -hmm. and emotional healing is really critical when, when doing things like that. When you're emotionally stable, then the information that comes in, it's not going to be shocking. It's not going to be, it's, it's not going to throw you for a loop. It's not going to be fearful, but it's important to be healed. Absolutely. So when we see things like seven lampstands, you know, what's given as far as an explanation are the angels of the seven churches. And, you know, one way of looking at it is they are the seven major chakras that extend along the Taiji pole, which is the center point line in the body. And when our beloved Zeke passed on, many of you probably remember Zeke if you've been around for a while with the channel, um, Cindy saw the guides helping him get out of his spine. He literally was, his soul was in the spine and, and moved out of the spine. Yeah, I mean, it was really um, something that was quite amazing to witness. And then after that, watching his body change and watching him figure out things like he didn't have to sit outside the door anymore. And he was waiting for Mike to open the door before he could come in after he passed away. But soon he figured out that he could just walk right through. These things happen in stages. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, he at first appeared as a dog, just like many humans when they pass on. When you see them, you might see them as a transparent ghostly apparition, per se, of the human they were. But in time, they become an orb. What we would would say is an orb or a spirit ball. Per, and that's as we slowly lose our association with the 3D body. What's, what's curious and in interesting, too, is that Sita, for instance, still thinks she is an orb in some times. And, and she'll, she has um, such a developed third eye uh, for a, a canine that is around people again. You know, in, in the wild, again, uh, animals can see and sense so many more things than humans can typically. But Sita, she sees everything. She she sees gray aliens that are you know roving around on the perimeter, demonic things, benevolent things too. And so we have a semi-adopted little girl that passed on um, quite a while ago that didn't look too healthy and vital uh, when we were in Nevada. She first appeared to us. And through working with her, because your energy and your intent can help people that have passed on, you know, want to stress that. And we knew that as a quote unquote pagan society, because again, what we have now, you know, the Abrahamic tradition is coming from the controllers. There's an esoteric side to the Abrahamic tradition that people within the Abrahamic tradition who knew the secrets passed on the secrets to each other and would initiate people into the secrets, which again, if you're talking about a shamanic tradition, they just are things that are taught openly to kids as they grow up. You know, when in a shamanic culture, an indigenous culture, when the kids say, uh, and mom, mom and dad say, what are you doing? I heard you talking to somebody. Oh, well, that was little Jimmy over there. Don't you see little Jimmy? Or it could have been little feather over there or, you know, running bear over there. Didn't you see them? Oh, okay. That's one of your, your, your guides or, oh, that's somebody on the spirit realm or in the astral. However you want to view it, view it, you know, here in the West. Oh, you're silly. Stop that. Stop that. Don't you ever talk about that again. Or we're going to go get you something prescribed from the DR. Yeah, you know, again, all those things are all about shutting down your extra sensory perceptive abilities. Because they don't want to, they don't want to acknowledge that these things are real. But they cultivate it for themselves in a very dark manner as well. So, you know, again, do what we say, but not as we do is, is of course, the motto of the controllers. But this little girl, um, it, it still comes and checks on us no matter what state we are in. And uh, she came the, the other night and was saying that the smaller of the two dogs sees her all the time. The big one sees her some of the time. 
and she'll go and play with them. And, and Sita, a lot of times, we have no explanation for what she's seeing. And a lot of times, she'll be following something that's at, you know, uh, ground level. And then all of a sudden, you could tell whatever she's following, she's looking up in the sky and she'll go running and jumping because she thinks she's still an orb and can go flying after it. Mm -hmm. She definitely thinks she's an orb. <laughs> she's not sure about this thing about being grounded because she does, she like takes a running leap and then she tries to jump up as if, <clears throat> as if she can. And I know so many of our precious, precious angelic animals are of this nature. They can see things and cats especially too and cats are also known to help clean the aura so if you if you have a kitty and kitty's rubbing up against you <clears throat> they're trying to cleanse your aura and if you see them meowing at what seems to be nothing it's a good idea to sage that spot so again seven lampstands seven chakras seven angels of the seven churches seven angels of the seven churches well, seven angels is seven chakras. Each chakra has, in, in the Devic tradition, in the Hindu tradition, in the Sanatana Dharma, there's a deva. And again, the deva, we can't equate to an angelic type of being. You know, some traditions might call them a god, other ones angels, others devas. There's one that's in charge of each one of these chakras. So if we're talking about the root chakra... And then we're talking about Ganapati, Ganesha. Ganesha is all about the root chakra. And that's why also it's typically tradition to start with Ganesha and start with Ganesha's mantra. Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Sharanam Ganesha. And that will help to open up in a safe manner the root chakra. It will also help to ground and root us. Ganesha is the remover of obstacles. We must be grounded and rooted before we can really move any farther. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and that's one thing that we really want to focus on is that grounding and rooting through this entire process. Once you have that mastered, then take another step. And we could view these beings as archetypes, but they are real beings at the same time. They are kind of forces of nature, but they are personas. They have their own unique characteristics. They have their own unique likes and dislikes and, and ways. And Ganesha um, comes across as, as very, very loving, um, very, very wanting to help, just wants to help people. He really, really does. He wants to help. And when you sense and feel his energy, um, it, it's a very, very positive one. And, you know, some people, of course, we always see the extremely uh, just, it's not even short-sighted, it's no-sighted uh, statements. Oh, you're, you're just talking to uh, fallen angels, you know, and it just shows a total, total lack of understanding and lack of true knowledge lack of insight and just buying what has been sold to you by the controllers. When Ganesha first literally did appear in front of me, it was as this kind of, a, it's in between a peach and a magenta color orb uh, that was very, very playful. And uh, the energy was such that I just giggled. I, I literally couldn't help myself from, from laughing uh, and was thrilled now you know i have seen many demonic beings they they don't give you that response no i i've seen and encountered many demonic beings we do every single day uh, we we clear these demonic en energies from people's lives every single day pretty much and it's been part of our lives you know the whole time we've been together and it was part of my life before that and I did clear properties when I was working for a, a paranormal research group and, you know, cleared people's houses and different spaces when, uh, you know, they were beset by these dark energies. And so we can do that as well. We can uh, connect to our higher self, connect to whatever we view as, as something uh, benevolent and more powerful than the little part of us that's contained within these physical vessels. 
So if you connect and it feels good to call on the power of the archangels, do that. If it feels good to call on Yeshua, do that. If it feels go- good to call on Krishna or Vishnu or, or whatever, you know, the goddess, uh, just do that. Mm-hmm. And you'll notice as you quiet your mind and you are healing your soul, you will be drawn toward different things. And sometimes that can get a little overwhelming too because it's like all of a sudden you're interested in 12 different esoteric things all at once. And it's like, which one do you go after first? And and that's where things, when it comes to spirituality, it cannot be compartmentalized. It can't be uh, taken apart. It cannot be branded understand this is your unique self coming forward and the harder you try to compartmentalize things and organize things the more it's just going to fray so the best thing to do is go with the flow absolutely Uh uh-oh he Uh said it he said it so you know if you've read the bible and you know jacob's ladder where he wrestled with the angel of god at a place called peniel uh, uh, hello how much allegory do you need Peniel, pineal, wrestled with the angel of God. Again, you know, angels are messengers. That's literally what it means. And yet, you know, the angels do hold keys to doorways. And and we've dealt with many, many angels. And we have many angels that we deal with on a regular basis and stay in contact with that work with us. And, you know, again, this is all part of the greater reality as you see this spiraling staircase going up, reminiscent of the DNA as well. As above, so below. As within, so without. In Jacob's ladder, how many rungs are there? 33 vertebrae, right? 33. Christ was executed at 33 is what they tell you. Again, why 33? Well, again, there's 33 vertebrae in the body. When we talk about the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar, and then, you know, of course, we have our sacral area as well. This is all a reference to the real resurrection, which is the light body. It's it's not the physical body. It's the light body again. How do you develop your light body? It's, again, through mantras, meditation, qigong, things along those lines. And again, the very first place to go and to get started is to clean up your diet because it literally is your temple. Your body is your temple. If you, if you are feeding at McDonald's and Wendy's and all the fast foods, if you are taking in artificial this and that, if you are on big uh, FARMA, you know, chances are your light body's not in good shape. And that's what we take with us. When we're talking again about the seed of the soul, we're really talking again about the light body and developing your Merkaba. When your Merkaba is activated, and, and all these things have to be um, done kind of sequentially in, in order uh, to safely again uh, develop ourselves, then your Merkaba is activated, you have your wings. So you yourself are basically like an angel that can travel through the different dimensions and shift your consciousness from one density to another. Mm -hmm. And you will be able to go anywhere. I know right now there is a lot of talk and and scientific research talking about how we'll be able to get in this vessel and we can fly here and we can fly there and we can go out into outer space. Well, guess what? When you're able to safely activate all of these things about you you don't need to get in any vessel you can just sit down and go and then trust when you get there you are seeing exactly what you would if you were already there because the energy body pineal gland is connected to the entire universe so why would you have to get up and go anywhere and many times we see what we might perceive to be shooting stars, but many times this these are beings. These are beings that are probably their three D is some sitting somewhere meditating, but their soul, their markaba, their light, which takes in information, has gone out on a journey. Absolutely. And again, time is an illusion. And that's an illusion that we kind of need to operate in this particular construct. So when you talk about like Yeshua, he's still there. He's still there. So, you know, know, there was one comment 
go and do some more research. Read what they said over, you know, back at a certain council in maybe 350, 360 A.D. Well, why not just talk to Yeshua and get get his take on it? Because you can. And this is the thing. They don't want you knowing that you can. It's imperative. If you know you can talk to Yeshua and get his perspective on it, then you're going to find out that what they've put down in the books is lies. It's not accurate. This is why they want you to just don't even think about that. Go drink your fluoride. Why don't you go get another treatment and you know make sure you get an ouchie or two as well. Oh, don't forget to fill those scripts. Yeah, that way you're nothing but a puppet. You're going on what they told you and, and you're, you're not getting any truth. You're just believing their distortion. Naturally, the sun is sending us energies. The cosmos is sending us energies right now that's awakening DNA and liberating humanity. So that's why they got to push for the opposite. It's just so obvious. It's so obvious. There's no reason you can't connect to Yeshua. And even if you can't hear him, you can call out to him and, and he will answer and, and he will try to connect with you. Because again, there is no time. He has plenty of time. Because <laughs> there is no time, and he will. And he is a benevolent teacher for humanity. And not just humanity on earth, other realms too. So, I mean, that whole idea that there's one chosen person, one chosen group, one one particular person that's going to be the only, you know, representation of of source creator this is all just a divisive distortion because again you know it's all about all of us awakening each individual once at a time now this yogi said he hadn't eaten anything in 76 years and also drinking he was watched twice for a very long time 21 days and he didn't eat or drink and the scientists were per perplexed and they had no explanation because you should be dead anywhere from three to six days without water, according to modern science. According to modern science, they're going to tell you you cannot live without water for three to six days. But yet, we know many people that do dry fast now for longer periods of time because, again, the science is all about controlling your mind. And, and he knows how to control his mind and do things that apparently miraculous. Ananda Maima is one of our um, main guides. And, and she's a beautiful uh, soul that was a perfect representation of the loving goddess, the divine feminine energy. She was another one that did many miracles, apparent superpowers, and also went extremely long periods of time without eating and did just fine and emanated nothing but pure love. There's an account here of one time when people were going to visit her when she was still also in the physical body and they saw her walking on the street and then you know when they got to her ashram and they asked her she she wasn't out on the street so but but she was out on the street. So how could that be? Because our consciousness doesn't have to stay rooted completely in the body. We can go outside of the body. So they were actually picking up on her outside of her physical body in what looked to be a physical body. This is Parahamsa Yogananda's uh, teacher, Guru, Sri Yukatswar. And when we look at most of the representations you're going to find of the cycle of the yugas, they, they're attributed to him. And so when he knew he was going to be leaving the physical body, he went and um, came to Yogananda, who was over 100 miles away, and manifested a complete new physical body in order to appear to him and just to show him what he can do. Um, at the same time to give him hope because he was going to be leaving this earthly realm shortly. And so, you know, he actually manifested what looked to be a completely physical body for his consciousness to inhabit while he told Yogananda, come back home because I'm going to be leaving soon. And there were other miracles attributed to him. And so, you know, he, his teacher, 
was Lahiri Mahasaya, uh, who met Babaji. Babaji is thought to be an immortal uh, and the incarnation of Shiva. And, and Babaji has, we've also been able to contact Babaji and interact with Babaji more than once as well. And Babaji uh, is a being that has spent thousands of years in a 3D sense on Earth, and then also, you know, on, on a higher density uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Very, very gentle being Babaji is when he comes through. He's another one. I get really emotional with his energy, uh, as well as Yeshua, as well as Vishnu. So it seems like the more powerful the energies, the more emotion that comes flowing through. And really, it's hard to contain yourself. It's hard to contain your emotions. You can burst out in tears trying to get the information out and when I channeled Vishnu that was I probably cried for the uh, at least a half a day and then many crying spells after that because with his energy running through me the way it was through my circuits was helping to heal me so these beings are very very special and amazing absolutely and if you ask them you know again these being, these beings are not dogmatic. They're beyond dogma because they also recognize again that there's beings on other worlds that will have totally different names for other beings that they are well aware of, but they'll know them by a totally different name. And again, a name is something that we give trying to in, trying to trying to give a sound to a vibrational frequency and and I, I just wanted to get that across because you know we we had an interaction with a, another being that was not from here the other night that was very very interesting and um you know this being's actually from a totally different galaxy uh and when they were trying to give us their name they're giving us a translation into sound of a, a vibrational frequency. Because again, each one of us is a unique vibrational frequency. And so when we try to name something, we're trying to give it a sound signature that's equivalent to the frequency that that energy puts off. Names are a man-made construct, so it's very difficult to channel them. It's very difficult... I don't think it's possible to channel dates because all of these constructs for the 3D can't necessarily be uh, given given from like 5D to 3D. It's a lost in translation type of situation. But you can get names if you, what I get is pictures and I get emotions. So I put those pictures and emotions together and then I'll go and, or Mike will go and look for this being. And many times Mike will already know the being because he is so well read. So in that sense together, he and I can bring up people's um, guides and people's you know other entities that might be around them so there is a way to work around it just takes a lot of time it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of patience and a lot of understanding because really we are walking this journey kind of by ourselves because I guarantee you the what we call the elitists or those parasites they're not going to give us any pointers on how to do this because they would lose all control absolutely yes. <laughs> so as we'll have all the links for you guys again and you know this is talking about the resurrection of Sri Yukatswar and when he discusses the nature of the astral and the causal wor worlds because again this is something else that I don't think we that gets covered well enough when we're on 3D the 4D and the 3D are like two sides of the same coin they really are two sides of the same coin so when somebody quote unquote dies it's like we flip the coin over and now it's maybe tails up and somebody takes an incarnation okay now it's heads up but it's the same coin so these other densities like when we're talking about going to fifth density that's a different thing totally than this 3d 4d um, Buddha was talking about rising above uh, these cycles of incarnations, the loop of incarnation, 
And again, that's the 3D, 4D, 4D thing. It's just nonstop 3D, 4D. We're in the 3D, body dies, we're in the 4D. We decide at some point in time, coming back, back in the 3D. Now, when we're sleeping, we're in the 4D. When we're off in many different states of mind, daydreaming, sometimes we start to actually shift. And again, think about it in terms of percentages. Uh, when you're asleep, you know, you might have just the tiniest amount of, of perception rooted in the 3D body. Most of it's outside. Uh, if you're daydreaming in a class, you might be, you know, 30, 70. Maybe you're 30% outside, 70% in your body. Maybe it's 50, 50. Maybe it's starting to go the other way. And uh, again, I, I, I want to try to give some new perspectives on some concepts that are maybe not totally clarified out there. Um, that's something that's a way of looking at it. When we are talking about some of these beings, like the one that came and visited us, this is a very high vibrational being. Now, what did I see? Just lights, <laughs> you know, just basically lights uh, in the pineal gland waving, um, almost like water flowing. You know what? Those, oh, those, those lava lamps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so this is a being that mix mixes with the uh, ether ha ha making it very difficult to actually take a form but if there was a form it, it's going to be a little bit like this also finding it difficult to actually speak through me through m my frequency having to figure out a way to interpret and and understand and you know you can have frequencies are a really funny thing but when a being is trying to speak through you and there's no understanding or concept of one language to the next you have to start making noises and sounds that are similar to that being to try to get your information across so when this being described themselves what comes to mind is a classic mermaid and literally, uh, she said that she was swimming in the waters of space. And we'll go more into that because, again, it, space is a distortion in so many ways. If we if we listen to the way they t they take it and, and they portray it to us. But what did I see? I saw more like these types of movements. You remember these lava lamps? This is kind of like how I would see it. You know, it's just different shadings of lights moving about throughout uh, uh, the area in front of us and and changing form. A and again, it's because this being is is a pretty high vibrational frequency as you were getting sixth and seventh density. Yeah, pretty, pretty high up there for sure. Yeah. And just really happy, just exceedingly happy. And that's what. Uh, lies on the very, very high densities is, is they understand it's all a creative process. It's all a creative process. And it's, it's beautiful. And really, as you go up in the higher densities, all you find, all you encounter is more and more love and compassion. And less and less of a need to understand what's going on in the 3D. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, it, it's just a it's a, it's a temporary thing. It's it's a temporary thing. It's a temporary experience. And as we've shared, you know, when they talk about this, it's your human experience. Not that you always are human. You weren't created as a human. This body was created as a vessel for you to have a human experience. Your consciousness itself. Yes. So again, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Look forward to your comments. Um, please do share if you want other topics to go much more uh, deeply in, and we'll try to get to them all. God bless and namaste. Namaste.